You know, life often feels like a series of never-ending challenges, doesn't it? We all know that feeling when it seems like the world is throwing one curveball after another. One day you're breezing through everything is going smoothly and then suddenly it's like you're caught in a storm trying to stay upright while everything around you swirls out of control. Whether it's juggling work, family, or just keeping up with the demands of everyday life, we all face moments that test our limits. It's like we're trying to keep a dozen plates spinning in the air while someone keeps adding more plates. You think you have everything balanced and then whoops, another plate wobbles threatening to crash. Imagine those times when you're staring at a mountain of problems and you just want to throw in the towel. It's as if you're climbing up an escalator that's going down. No matter how hard you push, you feel like you're just treading water, trying to keep your head above the surface. But here's the funny part. Just when you think you've reached the top of the mountain, you realize it's just the first hill in a whole range of peaks. It's like being in a video game where each level is harder than the last. You might finally figure out how to beat one level, dodging the flying obstacles and jumping over the pitfalls, only to find the next level has even more challenges and a tougher boss to face. And let's not forget about those moments when life decides to throw in a plot twist. Maybe you're finally catching your breath, thinking you've got everything under control, and then boom. Your car breaks down on the way to an important meeting, your dog decides to chew up your shoes right before you leave the house, and just for good measure, you spill coffee all over your favorite shirt. It's as if life has its own mischievous sense of humor always ready to keep us on our toes. But despite all the ups and downs, there's something almost divine about how we manage to keep going. We might stumble, we might fall, but somehow we always find a way to pick ourselves back up. It's like we're all walking on a tightrope, balancing a dozen plates, but we refuse to let them crash. Take that time when you were completely overwhelmed at work with deadlines looming, and a to-do list a mile long. Somehow you found the strength to keep going, pushing through the stress and finding a way to get everything done. In the end, life is a wild, unpredictable ride full of twist turns and a few loop-de-loops. One minute you're coasting along, enjoying the view, and the next you're holding on for dear life as the roller coaster takes a sharp drop. And while it might sometimes feel like we're stuck in a never-ending cycle of challenges, we can find comfort in knowing we're not alone on this roller coaster. After all, it's the bumps along the way that make the journey interesting. If everything were smooth and easy, we'd miss out on the thrill of overcoming obstacles and the satisfaction of reaching the other side. So while life may feel like a never-ending series of challenges, remember that each one is a chance to grow, to learn, and to prove just how resilient you can be. Jesus' prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane shows us how human he was and the deep spiritual struggle he faced as he got closer to the cross. This passage gives us a strong look at what Jesus was feeling in his darkest moment showing both his weakness and his strong commitment to God's plan. In this scene, we see Jesus at his most vulnerable. He steps away from his disciples to pray alone, kneeling down in humility. His prayer, found in Luke chapter 22, verse 42, reveals how troubled he was as he thought about the suffering ahead. And he says, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. This request shows that Jesus, in his human form, felt fear and dread about what was going to happen. He wasn't immune to human emotions or the natural desire to avoid pain, showing us that even the Son of God struggled between his human desires and God's plan. The level of Jesus' struggle shown even more in Luke's account where it says, and being in agony, he prayed more earnestly and his sweat became like drops of blood falling down to the ground in Luke chapter 22, verse 44. This strong description highlights the huge physical and emotional stress Jesus was under. Some think this could have been a real condition called 
hematidrosis, where blood mixes with sweat during extreme stress. Hematidrosis is an extremely rare condition in which a person sweats blood. Whether it really happened or it was just a way of speaking, this image shows how intense Jesus' anguish uh, was as he thought about the suffering to come. During his deep sorrow, Jesus received help from heaven. As Luke 22:43 says, then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. This shows how tough Jesus' struggle was and how God was faithful in giving him strength. It reminds us that even in our darkest times, God gives us the power we need to get through and follow his plans. The angel's presence shows that while Jesus faced this trial alone in a human sense, he was never really truly abandoned by his father. Even though Jesus really wanted to avoid the suffering ahead, he chose to follow God's will, showing the greatest act of obedience. This choice is the high point of the passage and the core of Jesus' mission. It teaches us that real strength comes not from avoiding hard times, but from following God's purpose even when it leads to pain. Jesus' prayer, not my will, but yours be done, is a powerful statement of trust in God's plan, even when it goes against his own desires. This passage gives important lessons for Christians. It tells us that it's not wrong to feel afraid or to want to avoid suffering. Jesus' example shows us how important it is to pray honestly and earnestly when we're in distress. His choice to follow God's will, even when it conflicted with his own desires, shows the highest form of spiritual maturity. Lastly, this passage reminds us that God gives us the strength to face the challenges we might pray to avoid. Jesus' struggle in Gethsemane shows both his full humanity and his perfect obedience. It offers comforts to believers who are facing their own tough situations and gives us a model of trusting in God's plan even when we're in great distress. Through this powerful moment in Gethsemane, we see the depth of Jesus' love and sacrifice as well as the, the mystery of his dual nature, fully God and fully human. This passage encourages us to think about our own struggles and to seek God's strength and guidance in our hardest times. Now, I spoke about hematidrosis. Hematidrosis is an extremely rare condition where a person sweats blood. We discussed how intense Jesus' anguish was as he thought about the suffering that was coming. A few weeks ago, all eight wheels were stolen from both cars overnight. I remember how hard I tried to stay calm and not act out of character. But when I was uploading the 42 pictures to the insurance company's website, I noticed my hands were shaking. This shows how physical reactions can happen when we go through something intense. On New Year's Eve, a year before the last one, I got a call that my baby sister had died. Again, I tried to stay calm and not act out of character, but I remember how hard it was to breathe and how difficult it was to walk. I lost a brother in Christ recently in the homeless outreach I worked with. I had brain fog and couldn't operate. A week ago, I was driving after the outreach to get back home to get ready to come to Rainfire, and I saw one of the homeless I work with. I thought about the world he lives in the same planet as me, but he looks at it in a more dangerous jungle. I look at the same world, but in terms of what God has for me, you know, the good stuff. But the man I saw walking on the street with his stuff looks at the world with pain and I see it affects him. I have learned how to read the eyes of the homeless. I see the manifestation of hurt. In the prison ministry, one violent offender of something reached my heart. I can read the eyes of a prisoner too. Reading is easy as God showed me how. What I read is not easy, it hurts. While driving home after my preaching for the last Memorial Day weekend event at the prison, I couldn't make the full 27 minute drive home. We had to stop. I was so overwhelmed with emotion of what people 
do to their lives and how I loved each one of them in secure cells. For my wife and I, uh, we have a person that has touched our hearts. The one that touched my heart is totally different uh, from me in all ways, but I felt like he was the son I never had. My heart mirrored what God was showing me, that love. My wife received a handmade flower gift given to all the women at the vet. We both received gifts and saw the hearts trying to reach out of their world and into God's world, his kingdom. The emotions were of joy, but with so much to process. My wife and I managed to make it to a parking lot safely to process our emotions on that 27 minute ride home. We did not come out of character and understood that God was with us to process what was happening. We knew we weren't alone. For other people, it's a different story and I pray for them. I've learned that when people go through something hard, they often have physical reactions and try to cope with them in different ways, like self-medication. But when I think about Jesus, I remember that he didn't turn to anything like that. Instead, he prayed and was obedient to God. Jesus showed us that following God's will, even when it's hard, is the highest form of spiritual maturity. Isn't that what we are all learning in church and striving for? God gives us the strength to face trials, even when we pray to avoid them. In Luke chapter 22, verse 41 through 44, it gives us a deep look into Jesus's humanity and his unshakable commitment to God's will, even when he was staring down the barrel of immense suffering. This passage is like a treasure chest full of wisdom for all believers. First off, it shows us the power of prayer. In these verses, Jesus takes a short walk about a stone's throw away, and then he kneels down to pray, as if he's stepping into the ultimate Wi-Fi zone to connect with God. Jesus is showing us that when life feels like a roller coaster that just won't stop, prayer is our safety bar. Another key lesson is about submission to God's will. Even though Jesus was in deep emotional pain, he prayed asking God to take away his suffering, but he also added, not my will, but yours be done. This is like Jesus saying, look, I'd rather not drink this bitter coffee, but if it's the only thing on the menu, I'll take it. It shows that while he wrestled with what was coming, he was all in for God's plan. The passage also reminds us of the reality of spiritual warfare. Earlier in Luke, Jesus warns that Satan is out there trying to shake his followers like a snow globe. This gives us a sense of just how serious the situation was with spiritual forces lining up like it was the Super Bowl of good versus evil. We also see the strengthening power of God. In verse 43, an angel shows up like a personal trainer from heaven and gives Jesus the strength he needs. It's like getting that second wind right when you think you're about to drop the ball. Lastly, the intensity of Jesus' suffering is crystal clear. The description of his sweat falling like drops of blood is a vivid reminder of just how much he was going through. It's as if his body was showing the receipt for the price of our redemption, and it wasn't cheap. These verses in Luke offer a powerful and moving picture of Jesus' final moments before his arrest, serving up timeless lessons on prayer, obedience, and the tough, gritty nature of spiritual struggle. In Luke chapter 22, verse 41 through 44, teaches us many important lessons about Jesus and prayer. First, Jesus showed the importance of solitude in prayer. He withdrew about a stone's throw from his disciples. This distance gave him the privacy he needed to connect deeply with God. Next, Jesus knelt to pray, which showed his humility before God. By kneeling, he demonstrated respect and submission. In his prayer, Jesus addressed God as Father, showing a close and intimate relationship. He was honest with his desires, asking for the cup of suffering to be removed if possible. Yet Jesus submitted his will to God saying, not what I want, what do you want? This passage also shows that Jesus received strength from God. An angel came to support him during his prayer. 
Even in his deep distress, Jesus prayed with great intensity. His sweat became like drops of blood showing the depth of his anguish. Prayer as Jesus, as shown by Jesus, can be a spiritual battle. It requires fervent effort. Jesus modeled persistence by praying all the harder as his distress increased. Even though Jesus is the Son of God, he relied on prayer in times of extreme difficulty. This passage provides a powerful example of submitting to God's will through earnest prayer even when facing immense suffering. It reveals both Jesus' humanity in his anguish and his divinity in his perfect obedience. We can apply the lessons from Luke chapter 22, verse 41 through 44 in our daily lives in several meaningful ways. First, we can seek solitude for prayer, just as Jesus did. Taking time away from distractions allows us to focus on our relationship with God. By finding a quiet space, even for a few minutes each day, we can connect with God more deeply. Second, we can approach God with humility. Kneeling or bowing our heads in prayer shows respect and acknowledges that we depend on Him. Humility in prayer helps us recognize our need for God's guidance and support. Third, we should be honest with God about our feelings and desires. Jesus openly expressed His desire for the cup of suffering to be removed. We too can share our struggles and fears and hopes with God, knowing that He listens and cares. However, like Jesus, we should also submit our will to God's will. This means trusting that God's plan is better than our own, even when we don't understand it. We can pray for His guidance and strength to accept His will, especially in difficult situations. And fourth, we can rely on God's strength in times of distress. Just as an angel strengthened Jesus, we can ask God to give us the strength to face challenges. This might involve asking for patience, courage, or peace when we're going through tough times. Finally, we can be persistent in our prayers. Even when we're struggling, we should continue to pray with faith and determination. Prayer isn't always easy and it might feel like a battle, but persistence helps us grow closer to God. By applying these lessons from Jesus' example, we can deepen our prayer life and strengthen our relationship with God, trusting Him in every aspect of our lives. There are several challenges we must overcome to apply the lessons from Luke chapter 22, verse 41 through 44 in our daily lives. First, finding time in solitude for prayer can be difficult. Our busy lives are filled with distractions, making it hard to carve out quiet moments for connecting with God. We need to be intentional about setting aside time for prayer, even if it means waking up earlier or taking a break during the day. Second, approaching God with humility requires overcoming our pride. It's easy to rely on our own strength and abilities, but true humility means rec recognizing that we are dependent on God. We must let go of the desire to control everything and trust in God's guidance. Third, being honest with God can be challenging because it requires <clears throat> It requires vulnerability. We might struggle to admit our fears, doubts, and desires, even in prayer. However, opening up to God allows us to build a deeper relationship with Him and receive the comfort and direction we need. Submitting our will to God's will is another significant challenge. It's natural to want things to go our way, but faith involves trusting that God's plan is best even when it's not what we expected. We need to overcome the fear of the unknown and surrender our desires to God's greater purpose. Another challenge is relying on God's strength instead of our own. In difficult times, we might feel overwhelmed and try to handle everything on our own. Learning to lean on God and ask for His help requires faith and patience, especially when answers don't come immediately. Lastly, persistence in prayer can be hard, especially when we face ongoing struggles. 
It's tempting to give up when we don't see immediate results. We need to overcome discouragement and keep praying, trusting that God hears us and will answer in his time. By recognizing and addressing these challenges, we can grow stronger in our faith and more fully apply the lessons Jesus taught in Luke chapter 22, verse 41 through 44 to our daily lives. We know that God is in control of our of all our struggles and that we should lean on him through several key truths found in the Bible in our experiences of faith. First, the Bible teaches us that God is sovereign, meaning he has the ultimate authority and power over everything in the universe. Verses like Isaiah chapter 46, verse 9 through 10, remind us that God declares the end from the beginning and his purpose will stand. This assures us that nothing happens outside of his control, even in our struggles. Second, the Bible promises that God cares deeply for us and is always with us, even in our toughest times. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 29 through 31, Jesus explains that not even a sparrow falls to the ground without God's knowledge and that we are more valuable than many sparrows. This shows us that God is aware of our struggles and that we matter to him. In Psalms 46.1 also tells us that God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. This means that we can lean on him for support and comfort when we face difficulties. Third, in Romans chapter 8 verse 28 is a powerful reminder that God works all things together for good for those who love him. Even when we can't see how, God is using our struggles to shape us, teach us, and bring about his good purpose. This doesn't mean that everything that happens is good, but that God can bring good out of every situation. Our personal experience of faith also helps us trust in God's control. When we look back on past struggles, we often see how God guided us, provided for us, and brought us through difficult times. These experiences build in our confidence that he is in control and that we can rely on him in the future. Lastly, leaning on God requires faith. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, defines faith as confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Even when we don't understand our struggles or see a clear path forward, Faith helps us trust that God is in control and that he is working for our good. By grounding ourselves in these biblical truths and remembering God's faithfulness in our lives, we can be assured that he is in control of all our struggles and that we should lean on him for strength and guidance. No more to be said, it's all about God. This series will continue at Rainfire, and that's a wrap. Amen, amen, amen.